but contractors get into cash flow issues, and so that's why we try to solve that for them. They made a business decision to change things up, and they went a different direction, and I found myself uh, without an income for three months. So yeah. <laughs> I've been very grateful for all the friends in the industry. And, We're like uh, a big family. <laughs> Hey, how's it going? It's Tim Brown, and this is the Hook Better Leads Podcast. And today I have David Summerlee of Square Dash on. How you doing, sir? Doing awesome. Great to see you, too. Absolutely. We uh, obviously, we got a lot going on in the industry right now. I would love to talk about all of it. And we'll talk about some. <laughs> um, yeah. But we are going to go into, like, what's been going on in your life and stuff like that. But first, cool. I want to know, like, is Square Dash really a cash flow fix for roofers? And what is it? Because honestly, what you described to me sounds a little bit too good to be true. Tell me quick what Square Dash is for people that don't know. So basically, we are solving the biggest problem in the industry, which is cash flow. Yeah. You know, they say like 90% of roofers go out of business in that first two years. Why? The vast majority of them is because of cash flow issues. Especially if they get hit with a great storm, they go out and stretch themselves too thin, trying to cover everybody, help everybody out, take care of their neighbors and friends, their community and then they end up in a situation where the insurance is playing, their delay, deny, defend, and obviously they have other expenses just to get troops out there on the streets and doing things. They, there's a lot of money that has to go into that and they end up in a cash flow issue. So we're trying to solve for that and that's how we do that. So a lot of roofing companies or roofing business owners get accused of screwing over their salespeople. That's definitely, besides terrible marketing agencies <laughs> um, that's like the, one of the number one yeah problems in the industry it's happened to me what do you think is the root cause of that i think it's cash flow issues uh when i got into the industry the first couple contractors that i worked for i did great i got the first roofing golden door award kick butt made them a lot of money and then they didn't pay me why because they're bad guys no because they got into a cash flow crunch and they had a their job running a company is to take care of the company and make sure the company stays afloat. At the end of the day, I'm a salesman. They might be able to replace me. There's some issues there where you might have to make decisions, sell one of those trucks or something. But at the end of the day, they chose to do whatever they had to do to keep the company afloat. And I don't think they ever intended to. They were great guys. But contractors get into cash flow issues. And so that's why we try to solve that for them. Talk about what's the difference between like a stack and starve and steal model. You know, stack and starve, if you don't know, what is a stack and starve? So the theory behind stack, starve, steal is you get a bunch of young guys to come in there, sometimes ladies. Ladies actually do better at what, do, what we do. But you, you get those people to come in, start grabbing deals, sign and sign and sign and sign and deals. And you get a bunch of contracts and then there's not a lot of money coming in yet. They got maybe their deductible check. And so they're just stacking up lots of contracts and then the salesperson's waiting to get paid. And then it seems or appears to the, the salesman because of whatever it takes to get that money flowing in, it seems like it's taken too long and maybe that the company's sandbagging on getting their jobs built. And then they're like, this company's never gonna pay me. So they end up leaving to go somewhere else thinking they're never gonna get paid. Well, in their contract it said, you've gotta sell, build, collect, you didn't do your job, now we don't have to pay you or we can't pay you. We had to pay somebody else to help out with your job to get it finished, those Look kind of things. Look at your contract. Yeah, always read your contract. <laughs> Number one thing as a salesperson, first, have a contract. Didn't do that the first couple times. And two, read the thing because it can be a world of difference in the results of what happens. What's the difference between cash flow issue, business owners that are just having issues versus the stack starve steal model? So one, I mean, attention. So Tony Robbins says the difference between a salesman and a con man is intention. Mm. Some contractors perhaps have a system where they go, I know that I can kind of milk this, drag it out, guys will leave, I get to keep the money. That happens, that's known to happen. I think the vast majority of contractors though, I don't think that it's intentional. I think that the insurance model is to drag it out as long as possible. The mortgage company holds onto that money for as long as possible. All these things stop it, the contractor from having the money to pay the salesman. And so what ends up happening is they think they're not gonna get paid and they take off. Mm. And in reality, they wanted to pay that guy the whole time. So you, the intention. So like this idea, because roofing has a lot of crazy people, interesting people. <laughs> A lot of awesome people in it. You heard it here. Like Tim it, thinks roofers are crazy. <laughs> it's, 
but a lot of really good ones, right? We got like personalities for days. We got incredible, crazy ones, and we also have ones that, when you say con man, like what really makes a con, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. what is, what is, and what, like, I know it's confidence man, right? Confidence man. Okay. Where do you get that comp, like, where do these guys get that confidence from? Lots of Adderall for some of them. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But I think a lot of them have had maybe like, a, a they, hard upbringing yeah. or yeah. maybe they had a great upbringing and people just lauded a bunch of compliments on them and spoiled them and maybe they just think they are great. Yeah. But, you know, everybody, they take whatever has happened to them in life, good or bad, and they become whoever they're going to become. Because if you have terrible things happening, to you, sometimes you can use it to justify bad behavior. And that it. may be That's screwing right. salespeople. That might be, uh, you know, Pretending to be something you're not, that yeah. could be, you know, getting somebody at your company and then... Or they got a chip on their shoulder yeah. and they got to prove themselves constantly and they never fill that void. So, when we talk about cash flow, are there any other things besides Square Dash that help this? Like, what else are you seeing as helpful? Because this is definitely one of those things that people need a fix on. Are there any other things... Um, or, or how could somebody use this now? Like, what is the real process to doing this? So with Square Dash, oftentimes you have an in-house billing person that also has other jobs that are more income producing activities, whereas yeah. collections and, and getting those bills paid, that is income chasing. Like you've already done all the work, you've already done the income producing activity, now you're just trying to chase money and they could actually be producing more money instead and for what is usually a lower cost we can come in do all that billing in a more efficient way get you the money faster and now you're not having to worry about that and then if you want the money now because you want to be the first to build in the neighborhood and get out to all the other neighbors first you want to be able to pay that crew out of the check instead of out of your pocket you want to be able to pay the supplier within 10 days to get better prices you want to be able to pay that salesman so he doesn't run off then you need that money now. And so for a small fee, we enable them to be able to pay now. So you got a $28,000 right? check, 5%. 5%. So you yeah. got, you got say a $20,000 check coming. We know that you got a $20,000 check coming. You've got an approved claim. You're just waiting for the check to go through the mail to the homeowner, to the mortgage company. It, like, it's floating around, right? That could take months. And so instead, we know that money's coming. We go ahead and fund you that money immediately. You've got $20,000 $20, minus our 5%. You can go get everybody paid and go on with the next job. It literally kind of sounds the money. too good to be true, to be honest with you, a little bit. It's incredible. It's going to end up changing the industry. I mean, these companies, by the way, like Square Dash, just a couple other companies like this, it's ultimately like it's surging in the industry right now. And like it, is, it appears that it's very valuable because... The, you know, companies are coming up quick. It's a problem long overdue for yeah. solving. Too yeah. many companies are going out of business. I had a, a software idea for roofing, which was like... It's just you and me. Go ahead yeah, and tell yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if somebody takes it, it would be cool because it would be cool to get built. Yeah. It was essentially like almost insurance for the salesperson and the business owner. And essentially, like, they, they agree on set commissions and it locks it in. So it'd be almost like a little insurance for your commissions. And you have to like, but the problem is it'd have to integrate with like every CRM and make sure, it, you know, basically this idea, if it's a huge problem, there's a lot of value to it, right. right? Anything that, if it's a massive problem in the industry, it's probably ripe for disruption. Absolutely. And that's why cash flow and like what you guys are doing, that's why you're coming up so quick. We're solving the biggest problem in the industry, but then what, one of the quiet issues we don't want to talk about is salesmen feeling like they got ripped off. Yeah. And then contractors behind the scenes going, ah, I didn't mean to do that. Like, here was the situation, those kind of things. And it's hard to talk about it, right? Yeah, right. nobody wants to talk about it. And when people do, all this drama and people pointing fingers and blaming it. Yeah. And none of that's necessary. Let's just fix it yeah. by getting the contractors the money they need now. Yeah. And 90% of that stuff could go away. Top rep. We're doing top rep then. It's great training. So you got to have that defined sales process, check Tokyo specifically. I don't understand how people make it with a defined sales process as an established company, but just starting out, you definitely need to have that because they need to know, like, and trust you through the whole process to, in order to give you money. All right, so I got a little question around, you've had an interesting six months. Um, can you give me just a little of your personal story this last three months, what you can share? Because like, I sure. know that, you know, 
changed jobs? Uh, I represented a rubber shingle, yes. and it was a phenomenal product, still is a phenomenal product. And I don't work there anymore. Absolutely love that product still to this day. I still recommend it to people constantly. People still call me for help, for samples. They come by and get flyers. Um, it was not real well known before I came on, yeah. uh, a little under two years ago. And I was able to help them, and it wasn't all me. You know, it's a whole team, but I was able to help them blow it up to where, in our pocket of people, everybody knows it now. And a lot of the leaders in the industry have wanted it on their own house. And unfortunately, um, they made a business decision to change things up and they went a different direction. And I found myself uh, without an income for three months. So. Yeah. And having no income for three months, is there any, and I know you're, you're well employed now. Yeah, but love like, my new job. What was that, tell, tell, just give us, sorry, give us a little behind the scenes. How did that feel? And like, what are you, is there any lessons that came from it? So. A lot of things. Uh, there was a lot of emotions that came with that. Uh, some of them I really can't talk about. Uh, yeah. Some feelings of betrayal on some things and a lot of fear. You know, yeah. how am I going to provide for my family? We didn't have money to pay for Thanksgiving. Yeah. Uh, fortunately, uh, a good friend, Josh Glass, came by with a, a pie and a, and a special handshake. Mm -hmm. And uh, another way, one of our friends had a sound, the, the special handshake. I don't know. Maybe there's a little cash in his palm. Oh, okay. He's a good friend. I okay. <laughs> For some reason, it sounded sexual to me. Maybe I've, <laughs> I've been hanging out with BDR too long. You know? have. We yeah. drove him home last night. Don't yeah. worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good. Is he okay? He's he's a little sore this morning, oh, but oh god, <laughs> once again. <laughs> Just play it. Uh, so, no, so, you know, he came by and it's just, it was nice to know he, yeah. he cared. He drove all the yeah. way up to see me there. And it's just, it meant a lot. A lot of people, like, the love, support from everybody around. Yeah. Another friend had us over for Thanksgiving dinner. We had kind of an untraditional Thanksgiving. We, we would use the smoker and made all kinds of yeah. meats and stuff and sat in the jacuzzi and had a good time. Yeah. So, any, like, I don't know, like you got through it, right? You got through yep. it and you, and for the better, right? And you, I think it's good that you're here in the industry, roofing industry and like, because you make it a better place, you make it a more positive place. And I think any company that you're part of, people are rooting for. Yeah. And I think it's, that that's all nice. we could hope Thank to be as a salesperson in our, in a business, like, or any type of person in a business, right? Like if we're at that company and people are rooting for us, that's a big deal. That means a lot. Um, and, and in the industry, people love you, are rooting for you. And if there's nothing else, because there's been some negativity online and, and things going on. And if somebody deserves it, whatever, yeah. and maybe they do. That's not my place to say. And maybe some of that's my fault. I don't yeah. mean to ever spread negativity. No, but what I, no, I understand. What I'm trying to get at is like, it's a positive show of force yeah. for you. Yeah, a lot of people, have, people rallied have rallied around and back. it's been incredible. Like, and it's, it's people have your back even though technically, no offense, you don't have like a crazy, you have a you have ton to offer Square Dash, but you're not like, you know, like, I don't know, like you don't have like a crazy ton to offer them. Like you don't run a conference, you don't, you know, like right. you don't have to, there's a lot of people in the industry, you're kind of like, well, I kind of understand why everyone's trying to but do that's, favors for That's them true like, love. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. When people, you know, there's an old story uh, that a rabbi tells, and he talks to this young man, and he's taking the fish out and killing it, and he says, well, why, why are you doing that? And he says, oh, I love fish. He says, hey, you don't love fish. You love to eat fish. You love what the fish can do for you. Mm -hmm. You don't love the fish. Yeah. And it was, it's always rung around in my head. Well, same thing. Like, a lot of people have been rallying around, supporting me, loving me that I didn't have anything to offer them, especially mm -hmm. for those three months, like no product to offer them, no money, no nothing. Like I have nothing to offer you right now except a thank you. And that is just, I, we've been keeping note of those things because yeah. it matters. And when you become more successful, you want to remember who was there for you. Hey, your success in my book, everywhere you go, people are uh, happy to see you. I've been very grateful for all the friends in the industry. And, We're like uh, a big family. <laughs> And I feel that way about roofing too. I just feel like it's a it's a place that uh, wants to honor people doing the right thing and wants 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 to support. I'm sure Square Dash. Yeah. So how could they do that? Where do they go to get started to support yep. Square Dash? Uh, you can go to squaredash.com. Check that website out. 
Also, feel free to reach out to myself or Heath Gover uh, anywhere on social media. And, you know, we're going to be two of the main people talking to you guys. So we can jump on uh, a demo and show you how it works, uh, how the billing part works, how the funding part works. Just getting cash flow working so that all these other problems can go away. Is Squaredash.com? Yeah, Squaredash.com. Squaredash.com. Squaredash all over social? Oh, yeah. Follow them. Follow them. I, I, I feel like I saw that with the previous company. Just everyone started just following and pushing yeah. the product. And uh, from my point of view, that's what I'm, I'm ready to do for Square Dash. I'm, I just, you know, just root for you everywhere you go, bro. Um, Thank and you. Podcast is put on by HookAgency.com. Hook Agency all over social. Thank you for checking this out and have a good one. Thank you, sir. Oh, God. <laughs>